might be lost. With us right now is Adam Steltzner. He is the lead for entry, descent, and landing. And one of the things that folks probably should be aware of are the innovations that came out of having to land such a large rover on Mars. And, and I, I thought this would be a good time to talk about them. Great. Well, Gay, yeah, there are two big things that we do uh, um, in EDL that are, are sort of new for Mars. The first, when we're entering, uh, this is a, a model of the entry capsule. Uh, when we enter the uh, Martian atmosphere, usually we would have come in and just sort of uh, uh, hit the atmosphere squarely. But uh, this time we have some extra weight on one side of the spacecraft and that makes it fly at an angle of attack. And that angle of attack develops lift. And then we take that lift and we steer it back and forth, up and down, to uh, steer our way through the atmosphere. What this allows us to do is it takes an uncertainty that we would have um, experienced in the landing footprint uh, from hundreds of kilometers, uh, uh, at least 100 kilometers, and is able to shrink it down to 20 kilometers. This is something we need to do to land inside Gale Crater. In that smaller ellipse. In that smaller ellipse. So you're able to slow yourself down if the atmosphere is a certain way, you need to slow yourself down more or less. That's right. Um, if it had been a warm day, uh -huh. we might have a problem with uh, flying too long. If it had been a cold day and the atmosphere were dense, we might slow down too fast and end up short. So this allows us to adjust for that atmospheric variation and adjust for um, variables at the entry point if we don't aren't navigated to the exact correct entry point. All uh, right, innovation number two. Innovation number two is the sky crane. Uh -huh. uh, everybody notices that. It looks a little bit unusual. Okay. Um, the sky crane really is composed of two pieces. We've got the rover and the descent stage. And 20 meters above the surface, these two things separate and the descent stage and the rover together, connected by cables not shown here, slowly make their way down until the weight of the rover is taken up by the Martian terrain. When that's happened, the descent stage recognizes that the, that the rover is no longer being held by it, cuts itself free, and flies away to a safe distance. And that's the way we want to see it later tonight. <laughs> Flying away to a safe distance and leaving <laughs> Curiosity here with her wheels down on the surface, wheels ready to begin down. her surface mission. All right. Well, thanks for walking us through it. I know you are anxious to get back into that control room. So let's go back to Alan Chen right now. Okay, we've just entered the EDL main mode. Uh, the vehicle's making irreversible preparations for EDL. Uh, there's no going back at this time. Uh, Cruise fault protection systems have this been disabled. Uh, those are the systems that kept us from doing uh, things that we wouldn't want to do during cruise, things that wouldn't be safe. Uh, during EDL, we're about to do a whole lot of things that would be considered unsafe during cruise. Uh, it's also making some changes to the telecom system as well uh, to prepare to send the EDL real-time data that we'd like to send. So, so far, so good. Everything looks nominal. Uh, the, flight, the flight director will conduct a short poll uh, to assess the spacecraft readiness uh, upon completion of the actions. Sounds like he might have already. I might have missed it. Um, oh, no, we're going to walk through the subsystems to make sure that we're happy at the completion of uh, transition to EDL main. Uh, so we'll listen in for that. <laughs> 